In 1999, Matt Ishbia was a walk-on player at Michigan State University. But after riding the bench all of college, Matt decided to make a name for himself off the court. Fast forward to 2024 and he's become a self-made billionaire, closing massive deals as a sports team owner and transforming a mortgage company into a global empire. But how did he achieve all this in less than two decades? Today we'll dive into the real life story of Matt Ishbia and how he went from a bench warmer to a billionaire team owner. Welcome to FOS Explains. Matt Ishbia grew up in the Detroit suburbs, and man did he love basketball. It was the 80s and 90s, the Pistons won two championships, and they had a reputation for grit and grind. Matt wasn't the tallest guy himself, only about 5'9", 5'10", and he wasn't the fastest or most skilled guy on the court either. But he idolized Isaiah Thomas, and earned himself a reputation as an uber-competitive, trash-talking point guard in his own right. He averaged almost 25 points a game as a senior in high school, but the odds were still stacked against him for college. He wasn't a highly recruited player, and he wasn't even on the radar of major scouts. But eventually, Matt worked his way to a preferred walk-on spot at Michigan State, one of the top-ranked programs in the country. Matt's journey with Michigan State wasn't a very glorious one, though. Fans occasionally cheered, put in Matt, because he was the very last man on the bench. But head coach Tom Izzo said Matt was a part of the 30-30-30 club, meaning you only put him in when you're up 30, down 30, or if there's 30 seconds left in the game. Throughout his career, the Spartans won a national championship in 2000, won three straight Big Ten titles, and went to three straight Final Fours. He'd go on to become a grad assistant after graduating in 2003, and considered an offer to join the coaching staff at Cleveland State. But Matt Ishbia made a big decision instead, one that would change his life forever. Matt made a risky decision. Instead of pursuing a coaching career or leveraging his degree in business, he chose to join United Wholesale Mortgage. At the time, UWM was just a small family business founded by his father. And back then, UWM was a relatively unknown company in the mortgage industry. UMW had just 11 employees, and Matt became number 12. He started off only making 18 k a year, and pretty much delivered fax copies to mortgage underwriters. But Ishbio worked his tail off in various roles throughout the company, learning every aspect of the business from the ground up. Over the years, the company grew from 12 to 7,000 employees, and Matt rose through the ranks, eventually becoming the CEO. Meanwhile, the mortgage industry was a crowded, cutthroat arena where giants like Rocket Mortgage dominated and smaller players were often left scrambling for survival. But like in his basketball days, Matt was still uber competitive, and he had a vision for a UWM that would set it apart from the rest of the industry. He doubled down on the company's commitment to serving independent mortgage brokers, believing that empowering them would create a more competitive and efficient marketplace. It was a bold move that defied the industry's conventional wisdom, and it worked. He also invested heavily in innovative technology that revolutionized the mortgage industry, helping UWM grow. As UWM expanded, so did Ishbia's influence. He wasn't just growing a company, he was transforming an industry. UWM became the largest wholesale mortgage lender in the United States. In January 2021, UWM went public through a SPAC. It valued the company at $16 billion. This deal propelled Matt Ishbia into the ranks of the world's billionaires. Matt Ishbia had always wanted to own a professional sports team, and now after the public offering, it was time to make that dream a reality. In 2022, Robert Sarver began the process of selling his stake in the NBA's Phoenix Suns and the WNBA's Phoenix Mercury. Ishbia saw an opportunity. Sarver was under a lot of pressure to sell his stake after an NBA investigation revealed years of employee mistreatment, including the use of racist language. His decision to step away paved the way for Ishbia's entry. So Ishbia researched the entire organization, spending months in Phoenix to get a real feel for the market and the organization. In that time, Ishbia quickly kind of fell in love with the city and the team and made the decision to aggressively pursue Sarver's ownership stake. But Matt was based in the Detroit area, where his company, United Wholesale Mortgage, is headquartered. 
and he made it clear that he would not be moving the Phoenix even if the deal went through. By the end of 2022, Matt Ishbia, alongside his brother Justin, made headlines when they agreed to purchase a majority stake in the Suns and Mercury. Before the end of the year, the deal was finalized, with Ishbia agreeing to purchase a majority ownership for a record-breaking $4 billion. It was one of the largest transactions in sports history, but for Ishbia, it was just the beginning. The deal included over 50% ownership of the teams, encompassing Sarver's entire stake. However, it still required approval from the NBA's Board of Governors before becoming official. And that's where NBA fans got a glimpse into the quiet rivalry between Ishbia and the Cleveland Cavaliers owner Dan Gilbert. Gilbert is also the founder of Rocket Mortgage, one of UWM's biggest competitors. Gilbert's company was the former top mortgage lender in the US before UWM dethroned them. And Ishbia even made a rule that anyone who works with Rocket Mortgage can't work with UWM. If you work with them, can't work with UWM anymore effective immediately. Of the 30 teams in the NBA, 29 teams voted to approve Ishbia buying the Suns, and the Cavs chose not to vote. Ishbia has continued to take jabs at Gilbert and Rocket over the years, but the Cavs owner insists it's not a rivalry. But Cleveland's vote ultimately didn't matter. The NBA approved the Suns' sale to Matt Ishbia. The $4 billion valuation from Ishbia's deal set a new record in the NBA. It was nearly 10 times what Sarver's group had paid for the teams back in 2004, and at that time, it became the second highest price ever paid for an American sports franchise, trailing only the sale of the NFL's Denver Broncos for $4.65 billion. Since Ishbia took ownership of the Suns, he's invested big time in the teams, facilities, and the community. The Suns spent $230 million to renovate their arena, the Footprint Center, and and Ishbia is committed to continuing to improve it. He also hosted the 2024 WNBA All-Star Weekend and landed the 2027 NBA All-Star Weekend. Before Matt Ishbia took the reins, the Phoenix Suns were the only NBA team without a G League affiliate, having sold the Northern Arizona Suns to the Detroit Pistons in 2021. The Pistons then rebranded the team as the Motor City Crews, so acquiring a new G League affiliate was one of Ishbia's top priorities from the moment he took ownership of the Suns. And in 2024, he made that a reality. The Valley Suns will play their inaugural season in 2024-25. The Suns also announced the creation of Player 15, a new umbrella company that will oversee Ishbia's ventures in sports, entertainment, real estate, and investment. This includes the Suns, the Mercuries, their arena, and a $100 million campus for employees set to open later this year. Since acquiring the Suns and Mercury, Matt Ishbia hasn't been afraid to spend some money to make his teams more competitive either. He traded for superstars Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal, hired NBA champion head coach Mike Budenholzer, and signed the highest paid coach in WNBA history. Off the court, Isbia also launched a team streaming service, moving their broadcast to free over-the-air TV. And Matt has dropped a lot of money on the Mercury recently, too. This year, he spent $100 million to build the squad a 58,000-square-foot practice facility. That opened up the same weekend Phoenix hosted the WNBA All-Star Game, and in the year the WNBA is seeing some of its highest attendance ever. 2024 has also been one of the most-watched seasons for the organization in its history. But the real question is, will all this spending turn Phoenix into the next basketball powerhouse? And what's next for the Suns and Mercury under Matt's leadership? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more on the business of sports.